But, uh, you know, I, I kind of wanted to give you tonight my, my little testimony about the King James Bible. And you know what? I love this book, but it didn't start out that way. Um, turn your Bibles over to John 8 real quick. Oh, wrong one. All right, we'll start at verse 31. Oh, no, verse 30. And as he spake these words, many believed on him. And they said, uh, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye will continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Not set you free, make you free. <laughs> and you know what, though? I mean, uh, you see, here's my problem. My problem with... Most modern versions, though, and different denominations, though, is they're so, like, I mean, the article aside, though, that's actual Christians, though, reading it, though. I mean, the people who are saved, they know where the Bible is, and they know how to grab it to it, though. I was 20 years old. Be uh, I was t almost 22. I was 21, technically. I was 21 years old before I got saved. My grandparents and my mother were NIV years. And you know something though, I mean, you know how most people though, they'll only read the King James because that's what their dad read and that's what their grandmother read. Well, I kind of fell in the opposite camp on that one, sadly. I mean, uh, some traditions are good. But you know what, though? you're not supposed to do something though just because your daddy Amen. did it. You're supposed to do it because you know what it's right. best. You have to actually do your own research. Yeah. You have to see, okay, well, this makes sense because of this, 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 and this. And God promised that he preserved his word. And you know what, though? If we have a perfect Savior, a completely sinless Savior, does it make sense that we have a perfect sinless yeah. book? Amen. I mean, the NIV, I mean, you can't tell me the NIV is perfect. And, you know, it's the own people. Everyone who reads the NIV, I wouldn't say there's a single soul on this planet who would say the NIV was a perfect word of God. Unless, of course, someone absolutely, if, that, if you were on a deserted island and, and someone read, uh, got an NIV, but, oh, no, wait a minute. They have the little footnotes that say this is not, this may be translated this and this. They cast doubt on it, even on the people who read it. I, it's just, that's not a way to go. I did not have a good foundation when it came to the Word of God. The Word of God, uh, it, I'm going to show you this right here. This is my NIV that I got on my confirmation on the Methodist Church. You used to have my name engraved right here. I ripped it out. See right here? The unholy Bible, the new Amen. Satan version. Amen. Yeah, that's about as much as I feel like it. I mean, you know something though? I mean... <laughs> It's a little crude, but you know, if I was running out of toilet paper, nah, I'm not going to go there. But, uh, yeah, yeah, Book of Mormon, man. Let, let's, I've got an extra copy in my house on that one. That'll, that'll drive them Mormons off the wall. You know what? All right, say what you want about them Mormons, though, but at least they have the King James Bible. So at least they have access to the truth. I, that's more I can say about the JWs, the New World uh, Translation, I think it's called. Yeah. New, new gagging translation. But you, you know what, though? I mean, the uh, thing is, though, is those who just hold on to that book for traditions use, though, that doesn't really, uh, they got the right thing. God's word will not return unto him void. But the thing is, though, is uh, that's the thing about faith, though. It only does you good if you exercise it. Right. I, I just, eh. right. but you know, I just, um, and you know what, though, to this day, my, my family, my actual saved family, I do have a few saved folks, even if their heads aren't screwed on straight. But you know what, though, I mean, they still do not take that book seriously, though. That's the thing I've noticed with people who read modern versions, though. Well, they're all the same, and I think, honestly, they don't care. Yeah, they don't right. care. I believe it, the psalm says, it is time for thee to work, O Lord, because they have made void thy law. Yeah. Lord Jesus, you can come back any time. Lord God, come back right now, please. Yeah. I, uh, the, the hymn goes, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. And you know what, though? I mean, this book right here, every time I read it, I'm like, Lord, come. Lord, come. Lord Jesus, you're so amazing. You know, I, I just get so much out of this book. I can't understand why people would like to trash my book. I think God feels the same thing, Amen. don't you? Oh my goodness. But you know what though? I mean, I just I I didn't 
And you know what, though? I was superstitious before I got saved. I used to keep this NIV on my nightstand to, for good luck. It, this thing collected dust all the time. And even my sister, though, who was something else, though, she's like, well, that's some way to treat your Bible. I'm like, oh, okay, but... You know, it's just like, when you're saved, I mean, you're just... You're a mess when you're not saved. Yeah. But... Uh, Anyway, though, I was, I, I don't know, I was just, but the Bible says it, in our text over in John, you shall know the truth and, shoot, and the truth shall make you free. Yeah. I'm telling you, in 20 years of my life, I was in spiritual bondage. It, it was in Methodist bondage. Uh, you know, uh, this Methodist church, I, this, this is the first United Methodist church. They're not like the real Methodists like John Wesley was. The circuit riding, trying to win people to Christ. Now, Bob Jones Sr., Great guy. I really like Bob Jones Sr. Not a big fan of sequels. But you know what, though? I mean, Bob Jones Sr., he, he preached Hellfire and Damnation. And he was one of our best preachers that America ever had. Even Dr. Ruckman will say that. And, uh, but the thing is, though, that church today, I think John Wesley would have a heart attack if he stepped in First, Meth uh, First United Methodist Church of Vero Beach, Florida. They, read, they had me. I was reading Harry Potter in the pew. Wow. Harry Potter. I remember when my mother made fun of the people who were protesting on Harry Potter. They're like, oh, well, it's just fantasy. And I, I was I was like, well, yeah, well, okay, I think that's kind of much. But, you know, I, what do a lost people know, really? I just, you got to be pretty far gone if you're reading Harry Potter in the pew. Amen. I mean, but anyway, thank God I just, but once I got out of my folks' house, though, you know what I did? I, I started getting hungry. <sighs> And you know what I got? And then I started looking at every single dumpster for something. Started looking into Confucius, Buddhist, Taoist, um, uh, what was the other one? Yeah, that's pretty much, that pretty much the new age garbage and all that. that, that that's the thing, it just made me more void. I really couldn't get anything out of it. I just, it's just, it, you know how the, the Bible says that uh, to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. And you know what, though? I mean, you'll drink toilet water if you're thirsty enough. Right. Of course, you probably have to cover your nose. If you get thirsty enough, you'll do that. Yeah. You'll do that. I mean, if you're in the Sahara Desert and you've been walking about 36 hours without a drink, you're going to drink whatever comes along your way. I'm sorry, Brother Parks, if that was your water. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh. No problem, man. Thank God we have the pure water of the Word, right? right. Amen. Not but, uh, anyway. But, you know what, though? I just... I kept on going at it and going at it. and You know what, though? I mean... Uh, I didn't get started the way a lot of uh, a lot of Baptist people did. I, I was a dead Methodist church, but uh, and I you can't really get too much out of an NIV. But you know what? It was something. So eventually, I started reading my NIV, and you know it may not be pure water, but you know what? Though it's better than New Age garbage, right? And uh, and you, know, you you can get enough to get saved out of an NIV. I mean. Right. God was pleased by the foolishness of preaching to save those who believe. Well, if you're going to be a fool when it comes to your Bible, I mean, God loves fools and drunk. Well, not drunkards, but He'll save a fool and He'll save a drunkard. Now, I, I didn't. I've never been on the bottle myself. I just the one time I did, it kind of warded me away. Thank God. Amen. But uh, yeah, so I read the nutty idiot version. I'm sorry, I didn't get started the right way. But, uh, you know, the, I mean, and I, around this time I was going over to Living Word Church, otherwise known as Dead Word Church. They used every perversion under the sun. I was telling Miss Parks about the time where I was saw the pastor speaking in tongues, and I'm looking at this guy like he's some sort of alien, came off of a planet or something. I'm like, what are you doing? You know, I th that's why I think, though, that the whole Tower of Babel thing over in, uh, that's a judgment of God when the multitude of languages uh, uh, starts piling out. Amen. You know, it's so around Pentecost though, they start actually understanding one another. Yeah. yeah. That's one thing I liked about, uh, about one of Ripplinger's books. Though. She shows how the English language is the perfect uh, 
instrument, though, to express God's word because it's so it's a hybrid of so many different languages. Though I mean, it's uh, got Hebrew, uh, Greek, French in it. I mean, we use in any given day, though, we may be saying words that came out of like twelve different languages. Though I just it's it's kind of a composite language, yeah. though, and that's why. It, and I believe the hardest, uh, they say that the hardest language to learn is actually English. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, because all the different uh, expressions that we use, I mean, and I heard uh, some foreigners, though, I mean, we use certain expressions like, it's raining cats and dogs. And they think that's dumb. I mean, I wonder who said that originally. I mean, do they see literal cats and dogs falling from the sky? I don't get it. But, uh, oh man, I'm going on rabbit trails all over the place. But uh, you know what, though, ultimately, though, what God is interested in? Go over to Isaiah 66. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye will build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look even to him that is a poor and of a contrite spirit, and tremble at my word. Trembleth. God's looking for them people. Are, are, I'm in a room, thank God, that's got people like that. Brother Parks, is, I'm, I'm sure that you've done that. I remember uh, when God showed me something personal of the word, I literally trembled. I'm like, Amen. the world, even Christians are wrong on this aspect, though, and Oh my God! Not irreverently, I'm like Lord God. I mean, yeah. all of us are wrong, and you're right. And this book has been right under our noses the entire time. Man. <clears throat> but you know something though, it, this and I've shown this to Mrs. Parks earlier though. There's another part in that same chapter though I think applies to us right now. Turn over to verse five. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. I think that's talking to us right now. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, and said, let the Lord be glorified. But he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. That reminds me of that uh, different church that's coming in after us, though, that bought the building out after us. And the Bible says, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to our joy, and they shall be ashamed. God's looking at people who will tremble at his word. Now, I don't know what their deal is with the Bible. I don't know. Maybe they're King James. But the Bible quite clearly says, I suffer not a woman to teach, nor have any authority uh, of a man, but must learn in silence. I believe it goes. So, I mean, if you're having a woman preacher... It might be a little screwed up on some things. Uh, but you know what, though? I mean, that's between them and God. But anyway, though, when I was going to the Dead Word Church and I'm reading the NIV, I'm getting religious. I'm not getting saved at this point. I mean, the, the NIV, I mean, that's the toilet water compared to the pure water of the Word. Man. Well, sorry. But uh, anyway, so around that time, I got transferred to Night Stock on nights. And it's funny, though, God has to get me out of my parents' house into my own house. He has to put me on the graveyard shift. And then there comes this guy named Nate. Now, you've all met Nate. Uh, Brother Parks, I don't think you've met Nate, have you? No, I don't think I did, brother. Yeah. But anyway, real nice guy. You, you should meet him sometime. He's actually the one who gave me this articles, by the way. But uh, that guy, he kept on witnessing to me, and he kept on preaching that book, the King James Bible. And you know something? No, I mean... Um, he actually told me about the issue, and um, I wasn't full on for it at the time, but I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll get a King James Bible. So I went over to Walmart the, the morning uh, pre uh, after that, and I uh, went over there, and I'm, I'm looking at the Bibles, and I see a, a King James, a new King James. I'm so green at this point. I asked the, the clerk over there, the lady seller, and he's like, oh, what's the difference? And she's like, oh, well, the... The new King James gets rid of some of that archaic language of the these and the thous. And, but it's, it's, mostly, it's the same. I'm like, okay, I'll buy it. Yeah, I'm really green at this point. And I show it to Nate after, uh, uh, after that. And 
he just kind of rolls his eyes and he's like, it's a better translation than an NIV. <laughs> so I, I'm embarrassed at this point and I, I go and I, I'm like, I go over to Half Price Books over the weekend and I buy an actual King James Bible. I got it with me to this day. Uh, worn out. You just kind of see. Uh, I believe Spurgeon said Bible, uh, worn out Bibles are owned by Christians who aren't. Amen. Um, but you know what, though? I mean, this book right here, I mean, this book is real special. I got saved reading this book right here. Amen. And you know what? Praise the Lord. But you know what? I, I bought this book, but I put it on the shelf because I was still reading the NIV at the time. Yeah. I, I wasn't saved, okay? But, you know, it's just like... And then Nate, uh, Nate actually confirmed it was an actual King James Bible because I, I was just kind of like, well, okay. I didn't know the Bible issue before I met Nate. I mean, um, I knew there were different versions and all that, but, uh, but you know, if I, if lost people, though, have got a real point on something. My great aunt, one, uh, I've told you this before, she, uh, she's like, why are there so, uh, so many different versions of the Bible? I mean, what's the deal with that? Even lost people got that. Yeah. I mean, I was too stupid at the time. Thank God I was too stupid to uh, know about it at that time, though. But I recognized it as an issue after Nate started bringing it up to me. But uh, and then something really interesting happened uh, after I bought that book, uh, the King James Bible. Um, maybe a month or two went by, and I decided I want to take a nice walk in the woods. I was actually there last week. It was real nice. And I brought a little King James Bible with me. And I wanted to read it while I was in the park. And lo and behold, the section I read was 1 John. You could probably see where I'm going with this. I read 1 John 5, 7 for the first time in my life. And I go back home and I'm like, oh, why is that not in here, but why is this in here? Mm -hmm. And maybe wonder what was different about those, those different books. And, you know, it's just, I mean, events that happen uh, to you like that, though, they stick with you for the rest of your life, though. I mean, there are certain life-changing things, and that was one of my life-changing events, though, as far as the Bible's concerned, though, with 1 John 5, 7. And I'll always be grateful for that verse. Amen. So, anyway. But, made me wonder what else was different. Right. So, yeah. eventually, Nate gave me this book. Now, this isn't the exact copy. But this book right here changed my life. This book, did the Catholic Church give us the Bible? And this, I mean, this, this book is real basic, but you know what? It contains the history of the translation and the other uh, translations, the NIV included. And it's just basically a, a history of the King James Bible. And I read this, and God would not let me sleep until I got done reading this. I think I, I, I finally fell asleep like maybe... Three hours after uh, I was actually supposed to. But you know what, though? After I got done reading this, still wasn't saved uh, after reading this. But boy, oh boy, I got a history lesson. I kneeled uh, on my knees before God. I'm like, God, I am sorry. I was wrong. Nate was right. Lord, you have a King James Bible that I should be reading, and I haven't been reading it. I've been reading it NIV. Lord God, I'm sorry for that. And you know what I did? I took that NIV and I put it where my King James was, on the shelf, collecting dust. I brushed off my, uh, the dust on the King James. been reading it ever since. Yeah, and still wasn't saved yet, but you know what? It was a good step. Uh, 1, Tim uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2. I'll start at verse 1. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications and prayers and intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men. You know, it's one thing that I had going for me. Uh, my friend Nate may not be perfect, but you know what? He was praying for me. He was witnessing to me. I mean, he was, he was being a good uh, Christian at that point, and I was just being the typical deadheaded lost person. But he was praying for me. Anyway, for kings and for all that are in authority, I am not in authority, that we may be led a quiet, uh, quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. For this is in good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and, 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 
to come onto the knowledge of the truth. Now, it, and I was open to it, and I was reading this book. And I, I probably went through it a, at least twice before I actually did get saved. I, slow learner as far as that. Slow to be saved, but you know what? Thank God I got in. Better late than never, brother. I mean, I got saved when I was 21. You were, what, 30? Hey, you know what? Praise God we got in. Amen. That's right. I mean, my dad, he's, he's about 56. He's still not saved, but you know what? If he got saved, better 56 than never. That's right. Um, you know what, though? I, I was reading it and reading it. I I try. I had to kind of have something to help. I needed a crutch at first. I listened to Alexander Scorby reading the Bible, though. I did that when I was at work. It was good. It was good to get started. I mean, be able to pronounce some words. And he's a, it's just. I, th- I believe he was the very first person to actually record the a natural reading of the Bible. I yeah. think it still is the number one seller too. Yeah. But anyway, eventually. I, have, I mean, I ate humble pie after that incident, and I, I, I said, Nate, hey, you were right about that book, and I'm sorry. I mean, humble pie is good for you. That's right. right. I mean, you know, honestly, one thing that I've learned from uh, reading uh, various authors, though, is you can't be afraid to make mistakes. And if you make a mistake, own up to it. First John 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Man. Don't hide it away. Be out in the open and actually grow from it. Man. It's one thing my dad always drilled into me, though. It may not be saved, but he's like, always go forward, forward, forward. If you're hiding something in the back, then you're not really going forward. Right. You're just kind of, kind of, you're looking, it's like driving, you're looking in your rear view mirror. And yeah. for all you know, you, I mean, a lot of accidents are caused that way, too. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're always best looking forward. And with this book, I was looking forward. And eventually, and this is actually kind of interesting because both of you talked about it today. I was reading Revelation chapter 3. This exact book, and I hold my hand on my bed. If I can think. Unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, and the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. And I tell you what, when I was reading those last few words, I got convicted right there. Amen. And you know what it says? I counsel thee to, uh, to buy of me gold tried in fire, yeah. that thou mayest be rich, seek for true riches, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that thy shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye slav, that thou mayest see. 19 also got me big time too. As many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in unto him and sup with him and he with me. Praise the Lord. You know what, though? I mean, I realize doctrinally what this is talking about, though, but spiritually you can apply it to salvation. Boy, oh boy, I heard God knocking on my door, Jesus knocking on my door. Lord Jesus, come on in. I could use the company. Amen. I'm just a lonely sinner who ain't known, don't know nothing. I can read and I can study ever learning and be not be able to come to the knowledge of the truth. But you know what? The Lord is truth. Amen. Thy word is truth, Amen. the Bible Amen. says. And you know what? I am very grateful to every man who has ever helped me with my understanding of this book. Amen. Even if they're not entirely right on some stuff. I mean, uh, one of the best Bible teachers of all time, in my opinion. He's got some skewed vo- uh, views on abortion. Okay, but what's he saying about the book? Is the man exalting the book, or is he criticizing that book? Uh, I've got a Schofield reference Bible. I, do you guys have a Schofield reference Bible? It's got a reference Bible. The man criticizes the book. Thank God he at least held to it enough to have it in there. That's a good reference Bible. Man. But you know what? Sometimes, I mean, just because 
A guy's right on one thing doesn't mean he's right on all things. And at least he held to the book. Right. And you know what, though? I mean, I, we always got to exalt the word. We always got to do that. That's one thing Brother Ruckman, Brother Hoffman, Brother, uh, Brother Reed, Brother Parks is. See, I can't confuse your last name because it's both the same. Uh, you're not related at any point, are you? I don't think Seriously. so. Okay. Well, spiritually, well, spiritually, we're all there, brother. He's parts by, uh, by virtue. I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> you know what? Thank God. Hey, thank God through the Word of God, we're all on the same page. Sorry, brother. Yeah. Hey, we're all get when we all get to heaven. Yeah. What a joy that will be when we see Jesus. Yeah. And you know what, though, Jesus, though, I mean, he he thought so much of us, though, to actually. Get, I mean. He thought of us, he looked at us, he had pity on us. He not only saved us, he cleaned us up, and he gave us a book to live by. Praise the Lord. Brother Parks, you'd like to come up? I'm all done.